Greetings everybody, this is Zombie101 and today I'm going to be showing you how to do custom music in Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Even though it's not fully custom music, you can do that if you know how to actually extract the assets and the sound fonts and stuff from Zombies Ain't My Neighbors and you know how to use something like Fruit Loop Studio and you can convert them into something you can use. You can actually make custom music that works and sounds just like Zombies Ain't My Neighbors without the super complex coding way. But this is going to be fairly easy. It's simple and straightforward. You are going to need 7-Zip and Audacity. I don't know if you need a DLL to be able to open MP3s in this. And this is an optional one if you want to convert something to an MP3, but you can usually do that when downloading something from YouTube. But I'm not going to be linking any sites for that, so you'll have to do that yourself. First things first, you're going to need to go to Google or whatever it is you use, and you're going to type Zeldix Zombies Ate My Neighbors. And then it's going to load, and you should see this page. You want to go here. And you want to download all of the files from these links. And you're going to use 7-Zip to extract it. And when you're done with that, you get a folder that looks mostly like this, excluding a few things like, I believe this, I might come with it, and these ROMs. And I think that's it, because I think I actually added this in here. And this is these are my ROMs. And you also need a converter to make SMC to SFC without doing this. This is how I do it, though, most times. So to show you that this is working, this is all of the original Lane Genie stuff from the original, uh, or set for the original game. It's like the level complete, the Konami, stuff like that. Let me see, this should say what the stuff is at the bottom for the sound effects. Stage cleared, title screen, and Konami. This is strange that they have that set as title screen but yeah it, uh, the MSU does take up a little bit of space because just with the MSU on the tracks it's like 194 megabytes and that's not including whatever your ROM is and it only mainly works for the original levels as you can see it says don't edit anything down through here but me and my big brother tried and we haven't been able to figure that out but this is sound effects and it only does the original level 50 uh, like the original 55 levels but you can change the songs on what plays but to show you I'm gonna open this up and you absolutely need SNES 9x or BSNES I will recommend the SNES 9x later version and there will be links to all of this in the description of the video but as you can hear that's the Konami sound and you can hear it playing and if you fast forward it'll play as if it likes the emulator fast forwarding everything now I'm going to show you how to add and make music files for this, and this is going to require Audacity. So before I mess anything up in here, actually no, copy files. You're going to be doing this slightly different for me, most likely. I put music in there. Shoot this all in there. I'm going to need all of these files from Wave to MSU. So next, what we're going to do is you're going to open your Audacity, assuming it wants to work. Well, actually, first, I'm going to show you. I want to import some Gold Patrol music. So the Sir Lane, Sir Lane, something like that. Spirit, my favorite soundtrack from the game. We're going to be adding this into Zombies and My Neighbors. But as you can see, it's a .wma. Um, whatever it is, the uh, Audacity does not support this. So that's why I said you might need it unless you're downloading it from somewhere. If not, you're going to open VLC. And you're going to locate it to wherever you have it on the computer. In my, this case, it's the desktop. At least it should be. Files. Yeah, music. The last track. We're going to do that. We're going to convert it to an MP3. GP for Gold Patrol. We're going to wait for this to convert. And yours will probably work unlike mine, because for some reason mine just spasms out up here. It does convert correctly, though, at least. And eventually, we're going to X out. We don't need this anymore. And then we will use Audacity. And what we're going to do is in the folder, if I can find it, that I have it. Yeah, we're going to take this. After we open Audacity, we're going to take this in here. Not, not Notepad. We're going to do this. And... The project right down here needs to be 44100. You can hit this area to bring it up. And right here, I don't remember where it's set, what it's set to by default. 
or what you have it set to, but it needs to be set to samples for something in the future. So set it to that. And most times the MSU actually has the music turned down because the music will actually blare over the sound effects, making it look like you're just listening to music barely having the audio turned up on the actual game for the sound effects. So what you want to do is you want to hit control I, and I believe you can do it for certain sections by doing stuff like this, but in our case, we're going to do this. You can change the tempo if you want to make it slower or faster, and you can do this for Amplify. This turns down the audio, this turns it up. I recommend turning it down if you actually want to make the sound effects play correctly, like hear them. And if you do change the tempo just because you want to, uh, you want to hit this because it won't add a jitter effect. Like I can show you if you do this, it'll add a funky jitter sound effect. Or at least for slowing down, I believe it does. Let's try this. Okay, no, um, that just didn't work. Yeah, it'll add something like that. If you use... If I actually can hit the right one, if you use this, it'll take like a minute or so for something short. So bear that in mind. If you have like a five minute song, it might like take 20 minutes. It'll actually fix it and correct it to actually sound right. But anyways, I don't believe you need a DLL to open MP3s, but I do think you need to one to export. I don't remember because I've had this a long time and I haven't messed with it very much. Once you're done with all of this, you can actually even cut it to what you want it to be. Cut it and edit it to have the sounds like the song splash you want. You don't have to do the whole song. You want to hit export and you want to export as wave and you need to make sure it is a wave microsoft sign 16 bit dot or pcm without the dot should be the top option at least for me it is we're going to name it whatever we want we're going to name it gp dot wave you don't need to mess with any of that you're going to hit save and when that's done in here i believe or it's on the desktop but yes i actually think the desktop we now have our wave file so now what we're going to do is you want to go to your computer's operating system spot right here or whatever it might be called. This is from a failed attempt, so I'm going to move that out of here. Because I've done this multiple times. Don't want to copy. Don't do that. You're now going to make a folder. You're going to title it all uppercase MSU-1. You don't have to do this if you know how to use command prompt, but I recommend doing this if you want to make it work like I do and follow the steps right. Otherwise, you're going to not be doing it, and you're going to be asking for help. But you, and I don't mind trying to help you if you do. You're going to take all of the wave to msu files, and you're going to put them in this folder. And you're going to open this. And you're going to put your wave file in here, and then you're going to open command prompt. And I do actually have a readme file that it helps explain, which will be in the description, not the readme file, but how to do it. How to make PCM files and how to do certain loop points to them. This will be in the description. So now you're going to open command prompt and enter cd dot dot like period enter and you're going to do it again and you're going to enter cd space and you're going to enter the name of the folder in this case all uppercase msu dash one and hit enter. Now we're in the folder and you need to enter wave two msu wav number two msu then you're going to hit space and you have to enter the name of your file for in this case it's gp and you're going to enter dot wave you're going to hit enter. And this should have made a new file in our folder. Name the same thing, but it's a .pcm file. Now what we're going to do is I don't need you anymore. We're going to open our location where this is. And we're going to open or copy, rename. You're going to hit rename, copy the name, and you're going to hit paste for the track. Actually, that was dumb. I forgot. You're going to rename it to a new number, which is going to be higher. So you're going to rename it number nine. And I'm also going to show you how to patch this ROM real quick. I'm going to open floating IPS. I'm going to apply patch. You're going to apply the patch in the folder and you're going to apply it to a copy of Zombies at My Neighbors. And it's going to make a file. And the way to usually do this is you want to right click the MSU program. It says .MSU and you're going to copy the name. You're going to rename this and you're going to paste the name instead of copy like I did and then you're going to basically name it like that file right there and it should work. 
Now, to make track number 9 play, we're going to open remaktraps.asm. This is done in hex. This is done in numbers. And we'll get into that when we add the new thing. So, uh, past state, we want to do 09. We're going to hit save, and then we're going to remap the tracks to work with this, because it's telling MSU to do this. And then this should play global true music on level 1. that have super special loop points and I'll explain that I want to make sure this is recording because this keeps going terribly raw so now this is when the audio position in uh, audacity comes into play you're gonna open up audacity again if you want to give a song a super special loop point which I'll explain I can actually do stuff right I'm gonna take your song and wh wherever you're wanting it to loop I'm going to cut most of this out because I don't need it. Um, basically, you um, this is it's going to play this over and over and over again. But in doing th this, when you're playing the song, you don't have to select it like this. Whatever the audio position is, it's telling it past that point of the audio file. Only play from here where this line is. It won't play this ever again. And I'll show this off. So I'm gonna do this. Find it. So now we're going to open our notepad and we're going to enter 00302842042 and we're going to need this for later. Now, since this is an MP3, I was going to go ahead and just cut this all out, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave it. We're going to do this. We're going to name it BI for Beyond Infinite, which is a really cool remix of Infinite's theme from Sonic Forces. I'll have a link to all of this in the description as credit and all that, so you can even listen to it if you want. This is our new WAV file. Now in here, I can do this. And this is going to be fairly easy and quick. I'm going to go to MSU1. We're going to put this in here. We're going to go to the command prompt. We're going to do the same stuff again. We're going to enter wave to MSU space. We're going to do the name. And it is case sensitive. And instead of hitting enter, we're now going to do space dash lowercase l space again. And if you have something like this done, you can just copy it, right click, and it'll automatically add it. Then you're going to hit uh, enter. And it should make a PCM file with our loop point, as it's called. And now I'll show you how this works. If it'll actually move it to the desktop. Sorry for any of the background noise you hear, by the way. I'm sure you do, but it is what it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy number 9. I'm going to rename this. It'll let me. I'm going to paste it, and we're going to name it number 10. We're going to open the ring map, tracks.asm, and we're going to do 0A because this is done in hexadecimal, and after 9 comes A. I'm going to hit save. Refresh, remac trap stop bat. We're gonna open this. And then you'll hear infinite playing or beyond infinite. But hear all of this? Now I'm gonna fast forward so you can just get an idea. Or at least let you hear what part of it while it's playing how loud it sounds over the game. But like around here is where I set the loop point, right? Right after the beat drops, like right here. Now, just, I'll be quiet so you can hear the difference in the game and the sound. Yeah, so this is why you turn it down, but then what? It's gonna fast forward it.
I don't recommend having songs this long in the game if you want. So this is where it's going to end, and instead of doing that do 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 thing when it starts, it's just going to cut to the part where the beat drops like I told it to, basically. So yeah, it'll never do the full song. It's like a super special intro. You can do better cuts, of course, and make the song shorter, but yeah, that's how you do that. The same goes for editing the sound effects other than adding them. I don't think you can add, and this is limited to the original 55 levels of the game at the moment, at least as far as I can tell me. My big brother tried editing that. I think I already said that. I don't know anymore. But, for example, this should be the Konami intro. I'm going to do this. Programs. Audacity. Greetings, everybody. This is Zombie101 doing an intro for the ROM hack. I'm going to hit stop. Export as wave. Z101. Enter. Convert. Save. Close. No. Refresh. I said no. And we're going to open our folder right here. We're going to go back to the MSU folder. Place this in here. Open command prompt. CD dot dot enter. CD dot dot enter. CD space MSU dash one. Enter wave to MSU space Z101 dot wave. Enter. There's our PCM file. We don't need this anymore. Delete it. We're going to go back. I said delete it, not replace the file or the folder or the recycling bin. Rename, copy, and we're going to rename this, and we're going to paste the name, since I don't need this anymore, and this is a copy, you probably won't be doing this, unless you have a copy, then you can, if you want. Now when we open this, it's going to be me saying, greetings everybody, this is Zombie 101. Greetings everybody, this is Zombie 101, doing an intro for the ROM hack. And yeah, it actually does have a limit to how long the sounds can play, as you can tell, it cut my voice off, I'm pretty sure. That way you can... Just in case you can tell that it actually is playing in the game, I'll speak at the same time going like, la 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 Greetings everybody, this is Zombie 101 doing an intro for the ROM. Fairly easy, simple, straightforward. That's how you do music for Zombies and Neighbors at the moment. You can, a lot of people hate the MSU, but I mean, it is what it is. I'm going to do this because I mean, I already know how to do it. It's easy. Thank you for the person who made the tool and thank you to my big brother for finding it. I don't know who made the tool. I don't know their name. I know it's on the site, but I'm dumb and I don't remember it. But yeah, credits to them. If you use this, you should credit them. That's how that works. You can make these files, do whatever you want. I don't know how to upload ROM hacks like this, but I'm sure you can find a way to use Google Drive, Mediafire, or something like that. Dropbox. Uh, I would say email, but the files are way too large because this is like one and it's like 25 megabytes for one, and I think that exceeds it. It might be 30. I don't know, but yeah, it's fairly easy, simple, straightforward. I don't know how to extract the sounds from like the actual game itself in here. Yeah, this is my HXD. I figured out how to customize it, and I did. That's what it looks like when I decided it. Not that you care, <laughs> but yeah, that's how you do it. There's a way to extract the actual samples, and I think you can make them work in Fruit Loop Studios, which I do have, just not on this computer. But you could do that and actually use the samples in Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and then use something like audacity to make the song sound right if you want to slow it down or stuff like that and then you can take it in the program and you can pinch it up down change the tempo whatever so yeah you can actually make custom music insert custom music even if it's not even based off zombies at my neighbor since like your own original song and do stuff like that so i hope you find this helpful hope you find this useful and you enjoy it and have fun and you understand, and I'll upload all the links and the stuff in the description for you to understand a little bit better, and I hope this is done in a way where you can understand it, where it's not too long, not too fast, and that's pretty much it. Um, I probably can try and do sections of the video. Have a wonderful day, and catch you later.